Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start Chapter 7 Notes. Uh, and this chapter starts off, we're going to be talking about some namings and looking at chemical formulas and uh, chemical compounds. Now, the first thing we need to know is that the formula tells us uh, the number of atoms and which elements are in the compound. So we're taking an example, we're looking at uh, water, and we see that it's H2O. Okay, the H stands for the symbol for the hydrogen. The two is a subscript which indicates the amount of atoms of hydrogen we have, which we have two of them. O stands for oxygen, it's a symbol for oxygen, and it doesn't have a subscript, so it's an understood one or an implied subscript of one for oxygen, meaning we have two hydrogens and one oxygen in our formula. Now, the when we're looking at them, how many atoms of each element are in the compounds below? We're going to look at it and we see we have water from before, so we know that two hydrogens plus one oxygen is three atoms. Okay, NaCl, it doesn't have subscripts here or here, so they're both understood ones. One sodium, one chlorine, we have two atoms in the compound. And we have calcium and chlorine, no subscript here, so it is an understood one. So one calcium plus two chlorine gives us three. Now here we have a polyatomic ion, which is carbonate, and it is bonding to calcium. And what we see is calcium does not have a subscript, and we see that carbonate on the outside of the parentheses, it does has, have a subscript. So what we do is we multiply in everything. So we'll multiply the understood one subscript of carbon by two. One times two is two, and the subscript of oxygen is three, so 3 times 2 is 6. So total in that polyatomic, we see that we are going to have 8 plus our 1 calcium, which will give us 9. The one below, we have sodium and carbonate again. And what we see is we have 5, 1 for sodium, 1 for carbon, and 3 for oxygen. So that's how we figure out how many atoms are in each compound. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the polyatomic versus poly, or sorry, monatomic versus polyatomic ions. Now a monatomic meaning that it only contains um, one atom and it carries a charge because if it gains or loses that electron. So this is basically like saying we have sodium which is Na plus or say we have fluorine which is F negative. Okay, in a polyatomic ion, it contains more than one atom bonded together. It's usually written in parentheses. And we have a list of them on page 210. We have examples from before. We had CO3, and it had a negative 2 charge. Now, monatomic ions, okay? Remember we looked at this is the hill of oxidation numbers. We, we talked about the group numbers, the S and P block elements. Uh, those number of valence electrons help determine the charge. Okay, so remember we looked at the periodic table and we said that group one has one valence electron, so it has an oxidation number of one plus. Group two, it's two plus. And then we skipped over to 13 and it's three plus. Then we have four and it's either plus or minus. Then we have uh, minus three minus 2 and minus 1 for 15, 16, and 17. Now, that's for the S and P block, and we know they're valence electrons. It's no big deal. In the D block elements, though, they can have any charges ranging from 1 to 4, positive 1 to positive 4. And when we name uh, the D block elements, uh, which ions being used must be indicated by using a Roman numeral, meaning, say, we have 10, uh, it'll be 10 and then 4. Say we're using 10, 4. We put 10 and 4 in parentheses. Say we're using iron or Fe, which is 3 plus iron 3. It would be, and then in parentheses, we'd have the Roman numeral for 3. So when we name these guys, we got to make sure that we put which ion we're using. And all it is is we just take that number. This is Three, uh, 3 for the oxidation number, and we just put it in Roman numerals in parentheses. Now, we, when we name monatomic ions, okay, no changes are made to the name of the cation, meaning there's no uh, changes made to the metals. 
Okay, remember that if the cation, meaning if the metal is a d volt metal, we got to put those parentheses like we saw before. Now, the anion must have the IDE ending added to it. Okay, remember anion is always the non-metal. So the metals really don't change any to anything to except if we have a D block. And then the non-metals, we're going to add an IDE ending to it. And obviously when we're talking about metals and non-metals coming together, we're talking about ionic bonding. So the way we can tell these guys apart is we're looking for ionic bonding. So let's practice. Okay, the first one we see we have sodium. Okay, it's a metal because it is plus one and it's giving up its electrons, so we see that that's just sodium. Here we have sulfur, and see how it has a negative two oxidation number? Well, that means that it is a non-metal, so we put IDE at the ending, and we get sulfide. Aluminum is a metal, okay? It's not a d block metal, so we don't have to put the Roman numerals, but it's a metal, so we just put aluminum. Now, iron is one of those d block metals. Those are the, remember, the d block is, uh, the groups that go from 3 to 12. Okay, so it's a D-bot metal, and we see that it has a plus 2 oxidation number, so this is going to be iron 2. And then we have bromine, and we know bromine is a non-metal, and that means that bromine is going to be bromide. And then phosphorus is a non-metal, so it's going to be phosphide. Now, when we kind of put them together, I mean, we name a binary ionic compound. Uh, it's composed of a cation, and it's bonded to an anion. Remember that it's ionic, so it's a metal bonded to a non-metal. Remember that the cation gives the electrons to the anion, and the part positive charges must balance out the negative charges. Now, the binary molecular compound is a little bit different. So this is ionic, and now we're talking about molecular, and remember that molecular is synonymous with covalent. Okay. Now, it's usually composed of two nonmetals, so ionic is metal and nonmetal. Molecular, or covalent, is two nonmetals, and those electrons are being shared between the atoms. And we must use the prefixes, or the Roman numerals must be used. And we're just going to use the prefixes when we name these guys. Okay? Now, remember when looking at binary ionic compounds, where you have to practice the crisscross method to get the formula for it. So what we see is we have aluminum and oxygen, okay? And we see that aluminum has a plus three oxidation number because it is in group 13, and oxygen has a negative two oxidation number because it's in group 16. And we crisscross those guys and bring that two down. Remember the charges don't matter. We bring that three down, and we get Al2O3. Now, when we name this binary ionic compound, we have to name the cation first. We use the Roman numeral if it's in D block, only if it's in D block. And the anion, we just do like we did, and we put the IDE ending. So we see we have aluminum and oxygen. So what we would do is we just leave aluminum the same because it's not in D block. And then oxygen, we'd add IDE. So this would be aluminum oxide. Okay, let's do a little bit more practice. Now here we see we have sodium and we have fluorine. Sodium is a metal, so it and it's not a d block metal, so it just says sodium. And fluorine is a non-metal, so we change it to IDE. So we have sodium fluoride. Here we have calcium and bromine. Calcium is a metal. Bromine is the non-metal. Calcium is not in d block, so we don't have to change anything. It's just calcium. And then bromine, we change to IDE. So it's calcium bromide. Here we have cobalt and we have chlorine. And we see that cobalt is a d block metal. So we change this, and we see that this is cobalt-2 chloride. Now we know it's cobalt-2 because we, what we do is we take this 2, it's down here, and it's going to go up here, and it's going to tell us it came from right there. Okay, we know that chlorine's a negative 1, so we see that it pulled that 2, which is cobalt plus 2, because the 1 was down here. So you just got to do a little bit of reverse crisscross. And we'll talk about this later in some practice problems. And then next we have 10 and 2, or 10 and oxygen. So we see we have a 2 right here, but I know that the oxidation number for oxygen is negative 2. Okay, so there's a 1 right here. So what we're going to see is that this number doesn't match up with that number. 
So what we have to do is this has been reduced down. So this is going to be 10,4 oxide. Okay. Then we have lithium and oxygen. Lithium is not a D block metal, so we don't have to worry about anything. It's just lithium. And then oxygen will be lithium oxide. Now, binary molecular compounds, it's consisting of two nonmetals that are bonded together. And we have the prefix system on page 212. And you have to memorize the prefix system. Um, so go ahead, go turn to page 212 in your book and just memorize it. It's mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hep, hexa, hefta, octa, nana, deca. And guys, you just have to have that memorized. It's something you just got to know. Okay. Now, we named the less electronegative element first. So whatever goes first in the formula is going to be the least electronegative. And we named the more electronegative element second and given an IDE ending. Okay, so what we see is we have carbon and oxygen. And carbon is going to be the least electronegative. So we can just put carbon. And then we have two oxygens. So it's going to be mono is one, di is two. So this is carbon, di, ox. And then we add an IDE ending. IDE ending. So it's carbon dioxide. Then next we have two for our hydrogen. So this is dihydrogen. We only have one oxygen, so it's monooxide. So this is dihydrogen monooxide. Here we have iodine and we have chlorine. We have one iodine, so we can just write iodine. And then we have three chlorine, so mono di tri is three. So this is iodine, tri, chlor, and add IDE ending. So iodine trichloride. Then we have phosphorus and bromine. We have one phosphorus, so it's just written phosphorus. We have five bromine, so mono, di, tri, tetra, penta. So penta is five, so we go phosphorus, penta, bromide. And then lastly, we have sulfur and oxygen. We have one sulfur, three oxygens, so sulfur trioxide. Okay, now what if there's more than two elements? What if we have three elements? Because all we've done so far is just had the two elements. So, what if we have three? Now, if a compound has more than two elements, then there's probability there's going to be a, a polyatomic ion present. Okay, most poly. Um, polyatomic ions are anions, meaning they have a negative oxidation number. They take electrons. The exceptions to that are ammonia and um, ammonium and dimercury. Okay, some oxyanions are polyatomic ions with oxygen in it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and when we name polyatomic compounds, as usual we name the cation first, meaning we name the metal. Uh, and the majority of them were going to be, the polyatomic ions are going to be bonded to a metal. So we just do the same like we do all the metals. If it needs, if it's in d bot, we got to put the Roman numeral. Um, and then uh, the anion is named second using the ID ending if needed. Now with the polyatomics, they usually come with their own ending. So here we have calcium and OH is a polyatomic. It's hydroxide. So it's just going to be calcium hydroxide. Here we have potassium bonded to chlorate, so it's potassium chlorate. Here we have ammonium bonded to a hydroxide, so we just name it ammonium hydroxide. And then lastly we see we have iron bonded to chromate, so what we see is this is going to be iron and it's 2 chromate. We know that it's a 2 because chromate has a oxidation number of negative 2, so we see that it had to be a 2 over here because when we crisscrossed, this was a 2, that was a 2, and then they just reduced. So this is iron 2 chromate. Now, writing polyatomic ion or polyatomic formulas uh, is the same way we write our ionic compounds. It's a crisscross method that we use. Um, we just have to make sure that we put everything in parentheses.